Well, good morning and a welcome to the first part of what's going to be a series of pike videos just created at different levels. They're going to slowly get more technical and advanced and in more details on subjects like rigs as we progress. But for today, the first one, I'm at a lake, the rods are out, and I'm just going to keep things really, really basic and cover the topics that new anglers that are wanting to get into pike anglers or anglers that are, are out there piking at the moment recently got into it and lack a little bit of confidence on topics like uh, bite indication, baits, fish handling, hopefully we'll get interrupted today and a jackal too will come along and I can show you a little bit in more detail how to handle a pike and unhook a pike. So as I said, this is the first in the series we're going to cover the first topic in a minute. Um, hope you enjoy. As I remember, always subscribe, thumbs up, any comments, any uh, topics you want me to cover, just let me know. But for now, let's get on to the first topic. So what do you look for in a pike venue or as a beginner, where do you start? Well, I would say pick an easy lake, a lake such as where I am today, which is Mill Lane at Yateley, run by Farnham Angling Society, which stocked this with pike over the last few seasons. And it's, an, it's a venue where I'm expecting to catch a few jacks this morning. There's a lot of hungry mouths out there. Um, although it doesn't feel like winter's here, we're just, uh, it's the 31st of October, a lot of rain, and it's not really cold enough yet. There's still a lot of bait fish out there, but it's a, what I would classify an easy venue where you're going to catch, you know, numbers of fish up to about 10 pound. It's going to give you that confidence in unhooking, getting your bite detection correct and um, things like what bait they prefer, etc, etc. So pick a venue when you first start that I would classify as easy. Lots of, lots of smaller pike. Don't get me wrong, this lake has done pike in the past to over 30 pounds, so I'm sure there's a big girl out there, but in general you're going to go through a lot of kind of smaller male hungry jacks before. Um, and then afterwards, as I say in later videos, you can progress once you've got some confidence onto maybe a lake like Frencham Great Pond, which has got, you know, good, it's a good lake for doubles. Um, the biggest I've had I think is about £17, but normally when you get one it's going to be between seven and sort of 14 pounds. So that's a, a, a venue to progress. And then once you're a little bit more experienced and you're thinking, you know, I want a, a big gal and you're looking for maybe a fish, you know, over 20 pound, let's say, and there are venues out there that are capable of doing that. You do have to do some homework, ask a few questions. You might not get the right answers, but sometimes reverse psychology works and you go, I think he's not telling me the truth. So. At the start though, pick an easy water, one where hopefully these rods are going to go off, you're going to get a few jacks and you're going to get confidence. And also what I'd, I'd say is conditions, timing, to get you know more bites you've got to be on the lake at the right time of day and for me bite time is first light, low light conditions. Um, and as I say if I had 12 hours at my disposal over a week I wouldn't go fishing for one day for the whole of those 12 hours. Some, unfortunately, you'll have to, but I would spread those like three hour sessions in the morning because it would get me a knowledge of the lake. I can move around the lake, find areas where the fish are feeding. Um, so low light, if you are out for the whole day, then pick an overcast day, one where you got a, you know, a mild spell, let's say, in the, in the winter, a uh, nice southwesterly, but Pike are just like all other fish, like carp, they will start responding in the winter to that little rise in temperature, maybe a little bit of warm water, rain going in and um, cloud cover. And again, if you can't get down in the mornings, but you finish work and you think, oh, well, I could get down the lake and I've got an hour, that hour at the end of the day is going to be more productive than probably six or seven hours in the middle of the day. So get down the lake, fish an hour, you know, as it gets dark, and then maybe an hour into darkness. So uh, low light conditions, um, mild spells, pick an easy lake, get some confidence, tweak your rigs, etc., etc., and then you'll be able to progress onto those harder lakes and catch those bigger fish. Uh, 
Okay, let's just quickly run through the equipment you need when you first go out pike fishing. If you've been carp fishing, you're gonna have pretty much all the equipment at your disposal. You're already gonna have it. You're not gonna to have to go out and buy too much, which is great news. These are 275 carp rods, 12 foot. We've all got kind of three pound, three and a half pound test curve rods nowadays, which are absolutely fine for pike fishing. I've got 6,000 Shimano Aeros here and they are loaded with 15 pound mono. I'm not gonna go into using braid at the moment because that will be covered in a later video. But at the moment, 15 pound mono, even 18 pound mono on your reels will do. As you can see, I've got some long bank sticks and I'll cover that in this video with bite indications. So I've got each rod on separate sticks, separate alarms, no rod pod, and there's a reason for that. So long bank sticks, I've got the rods being held in the back by not the actual rod rests that clamp down and keep a grip of your, your rod. You don't want those. You want to be able to lift your rod straight out with no resistance. As I said, we've got the alarms there. I've got a big unhooking mat here and I've got a big, big landing net there, a big triangular landing net. I don't always use the big triangular nets. I've quite often got a pan, one of the big barbel spoons again. I'll come into that and I think I've just had a pike just move right in front of me but because it's so mild it could actually have been a tench so um, as I say the tackle you need the equipment you need you've already got that you don't have to go out and buy anything new apart from maybe a few little riggy bits but well, again we're coming to come on to that later in the video when we talk about rigs. Okay, let's talk about the topic of bait. Um, I did do this yesterday when I was on the bank, but I'm redoing it today because I did get confirmation yesterday that unfortunately Baitbox, a company that's been supplying pike sea anglers for over 20 years, fresh sea baits, the best I would say on the market, have decided to call it day for one reason or another, which uh, is really, really, really sad. So um, I'm just gonna run through the baits anyway. I have three of my favorite, three go-to baits. And my first is gonna be the good, uh, good old sardine, a nice, soft, oily bait. Again, one that has to be frozen when you cast it out, but they defrost quickly. They've got a nice bit of buoyancy when they're frozen so they can sit up over the weed and then slowly drop down. Sometimes I've cut the head off, release that blood and juice, especially when I'm on a river. Um, really, really effective. Um, and sardines would always, always be in my cool bag. The good thing about sardines is you can actually source these elsewhere on the, the fishmonger's store at let's say Morrison's, I think Tesco's and Sainsbury's have done away with their counters. So, but fortunately Morrison's haven't. And I know Linda at the Aldershot branch and when the sardines come in, she tells my girlfriend who works there and I'm straight down, I pick up a big batch, try and get her you know, to pack them loosely, individually, bring them home and I put them in the freezer anyway. Great for Mazanda fishing at Old Berry, they were, that's where, where I used to use a lot of them um, and brilliant for your, your pike fishing. So sardines, they're always, always in my cool box. Secondly, match the hatch. 99% of all venues in this country will have roach swimming within and pike, you know, it's their natural diet. So again, I used to source these from bait box, different sizes, um, not too sure where we're going to get them, you know, from now on. I'm sure there's other companies that will pop up on the market and we can source those. So roach are absolutely fantastic. Thirdly on the list is smelt. Now smelt has been difficult to get hold of for a long time. And, you know, going on from today, it's probably going to be almost impossible. And if you can find it, it's going to be expensive. 
I still have a few bags. They're not as fresh or as, you know, as new as they, they could be, but they've been frozen down and will be good to go. Some anglers say they smell a you know, cucumber. I smell them and they just smell fishy to me. They are quite pale, quite yellowy in colour, but these absolutely take certain venues apart um, and will be in my cool bag as my third choice bait. As I said, these are gonna be really difficult to source from now. So the next on the list would be mackerel, joey mackerel, small mackerel. Again, if you've got a fish counter, you can go to, have a word with them. If there's any that have come in that are small, haven't been sold, just get them to put them aside and then go down, pick them up, and uh, they will be a good kind of backup bait for my smell. So, um, mackerel another great bait for your sea anglers if you're bass fishing and they've got tough skin so if you're, you're fishing a venue and you're having to give it a, a big one you know a frozen bait the tough skins you can cast these a long long way so as i said keep them frozen get your baits if you can get them from morrison's that are you know already frozen not the ones that are laid out that have defrosted ask if they've got some frozen ones bring them home Get yourself a nice little cooler pouch. This is just perfect for the day session. And the night before I go fishing, I just pop into the garage, go to the freezer, put my mackerel, put my smelt, put my roach, make sure I've got two or three packs of sardines. They go in with a couple of ice cube box, uh, blocks. In it goes. I actually put that in my freezer on a shelf freeze it down in the morning i just get up go to my freezer pick it up put it in the car and i'm all good to go let's just run through bite indication probably if not the most important part of pike fishing you need to have a very sensitive delicate bite indication system now when you first uh think about pike fishing and you think oh i'm going to go pike fishing for the first time one of the pieces of equipment that the shops will sell you is a drop-off indicator um, i've got to be honest i very 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 rarely use these um, one instance i would use them if i'm fishing a big reservoir i'm fishing at distance and i'm using braid but in the wrong hands especially when you're fishing 15 pound mono that's quite thick they can be difficult to adjust in the wrong hands, as I said, you can have them too tight. And as you've seen today, some of the bites off pike, they're not screamers, they can be beep, beep, and you think, is it, isn't it? And in that case, you need to, you know, pick the rod up, know that you've had something's happen, pick the rod up and strike. If you're using a drop-off indicator and it's too tight, you're gonna go beep, beep, not drop off. You can be up there having a cup of coffee away from your rods, which I'm never, never far away from my rods, having a coffee, texting somebody, having a look at a video on your phone and then all of a sudden your drop off indicator will go and you'll have a deep up pipe because the two little bleeps that you kind of like just didn't really respond to could have been a pipe picking your bait up so i would say you don't need these 99 percent of my pike fishing isn't at distance it's on club lakes small lakes and i use these simple little homemade bobbins as you can see there they are dangling on the line nice and sensitive the alarms are there and all they are is a little bait popper i get a paper clip that i cut in a half push it in one hole bore out the other hole put a really cheap isotope in which just gives it a tiny little bit of weight you can also just put it and push it into a little bit of mud if it's really really windy um, and don't worry about drop backs because somebody will say well how do you know drop backs i'm fishing running really low resistance running rigs no drop backs on on here but really do i have to push that into the mud i just have them dangling on a long drop bait runners aren't on so when i'm sitting close the bobbin goes up and i'm straight into that that the bobbin might go flying off hence why i use the red ones they float so you can just find them in the actual water sometimes up in the trees even um, but absolutely fantastic and when you get a bite all it's going to happen is and as it goes starts doing that i've already picked the rod up and i'm striking so you don't have to go and buy drop-off indicators as i said we will go through these in later videos when i get a little bit more technical um, but in general little homemade bobbins sitting by your rod 
watching them, any bleep, look at your bobbin, look at your rod tip, because that is what's going to tell you you've got a bite. And also, very important, if you're using these light bobbins, always, always check that if line goes out, that you get an audible kind of indication, because sometimes on these roller alarms, you can do that and you don't get any audible. So if, you, if that's happening, just drop it off, get the eye about you know six, eight inches away from the alarm and make it a bit more of a kind of like steeper drop because sometimes uh, having them like this, you can't, you know, it won't, it won't make an audible, but just check it, check it, check it every time. And then at least you can sit down, have a cup of tea, no, next to your rod, one bleep, you can actually see it move and respond to it immediately. So yeah, bite indication, very, very important, but don't get carried away. I've got to buy drop-off indicators because as I said, 90.9% of my time, I'm using 15 pound mono. I'm fishing close range. Um, I'm not fishing in gale force winds. Look at it today. There is quite a lot of wind, but I'm, I'm getting away with these really light homemade, homemade bobbins. Okay, I've just remembered I haven't touched or spoken about float fishing. And again, for the beginner, a lot of anglers would go out and buy some floats because there's no better way than watching a float dip, whether you're trotting a float down a chalk stream, waggler fishing, or even pike fishing. The float just dips, off it goes, and you're into a fish. But in most cases, I'm using two rods and there's no way that you can watch a float on the left of your swim and the right of your swim or in two different positions. So I very rarely use floats because in most cases I'm using two rods. I can understand um, the anglers fishing the big reservoirs, float ledgering when you're, you're trying to keep that line slackish because of the, the boat going up and down. You don't want you know, your lead being pulled all the time. Last thing you want, you might spook a, you know, a 30 pounder. So, um, but I can fully understand them using it from a boat. And I can also understand anglers if they're just using one rod and maybe, you know, trotting a dead bait down a river or even using a live bait, finding the pike up in a corner, hoarding a load of small fish, catching yourself a live bait, dropping it out there, watching that go and off it goes. No better way. But in general, if you're going to use two rods, dead baiting, I wouldn't bother. Just make sure you got a really sensitive, audible and visual bite indication system. Now this pike has got a trailing hook, which can be really dangerous. And as I will cover later on, how I do is I don't put these in a landing net. I simply will hand them out. I've got some forceps with me and literally all I'm going to do is knock those hooks out. Second pike of the morning as you can see and as I said this place is full of small jacks. Um, this is tiny, really thin unfortunately. And I've used the landing net now because I couldn't see any hooks, any trailing hooks. This fish came on the pop-up. Again, I'll go into a pop-up rig later in the videos when we get into more technical. And the way to handle a pike, and believe me, the bigger the pike, the better. Waterproof trousers, and literally all you do, and you've got to be a bit careful, is put your finger in the mouth. The mouth opens, as you can see, and then you literally be very careful with the gill covers there because that's what a pipe breathes. You just literally pop those hooks out and there you have it, a really skinny, hungry pike. Tiny little fish, but as I said, the way to handle those, the bigger, the bigger the fish, far easier. You've got a lot more room in the mouth to actually unhook them. Um, just turn them on their backs lift their mouths out and generally the bigger the fish the heavier the head it just opens the mouth and then you can use your tools which I've got here next to me in 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 take them out just checking down in the throat because it is really lean um, that it is all good and there you have it and believe me pike do not bite you 
Yeah, they will not bite you. You're gonna do more damage to your hands with a perch with the spines or a zander, even a cart with a dorsal fin. Pike, you know, they just haven't got any areas here that are gonna harm you, so don't be scared of them. Um, you can get a glove, but put your hand in there and you can just open the mouth. Obviously, now and again, when you do this, you hit the gill rakers, and that is sometimes when you get that bleed in the hand because the gill rakers have got little teeth on. But as you say, tiny little one. I use the net because obviously you don't want to pick them out and then carry them to our unhooking mat. My unhooking mat is right next to the water. So if I come along, I can pick them up, I can take them out, I can put them down. But in this case, if you don't see any hooks, use your landing net. We're into a pike on the sardine, as I said, just presented on the bottom, my low resistance rig, but I can already say that hook is trailing. So I'm not even gonna put this in the net. I'm just gonna hand it out and unhook it in the water because I don't want to do too much damage to me or the pike. So over the head, there's a the hook. Get your wire cutters, uh, your forceps that you have on you. Cut it out. Now it is, as I said, a little jack, picked up a sardine. One hook was in, just in the scissors because I, I struck really quickly. No hesitation, don't leave it any time. And the other one was trailing. That is the damaged one that could do you go in your finger or in the net. So I don't, I don't use a landing net on small fish like this. I just get my forceps, uh, unhook them, and back they go. Okay, we've just had that second small jack. I'm sorry when I said put your hand in the mouth, don't put your hand in its mouth. It, put your hand down the side of its gill, uh, gill cover and sometimes your hand will just scrape up against these little kind of teeth on the gill plate just be very very careful don't worry about that a pike has got what they call anticoagulant um, in their teeth and when it actually hits a, a small fish it makes it bleed so sometimes you can get a tiny little scratch and it bleeds and it bleeds and it bleeds but, but please don't be scared of a pike they ain't going to bite you um, they, you know you're going to do a lot lot more damage to a pike if you haven't got the right equipment so if you've got your hand there you can just feel it scraping don't really worry about that but make sure when you put your hand in that gill plate you haven't grabbed in the gill plate as well make sure your hooks are away from that if you can your hands away from that as I said these small jacks are really really difficult to handle so if you can get some practice on those then when it comes to handling bigger fish it's going to be really really easy for you but as I said I'm fishing Mill Lane Farnham Angling Society to come here you can't just turn up and pike fish you need to go to one of the pike tutorials where you have Mike Slater who is an expert on pike fishing here run you through very much the same as what i'm saying um probably not all the topics like bait or what have you but certainly make sure you've got all the right equipment because you won't be allowed on here and fishing for pike unless you have so what tools do you need well i've always got these little forceps and i pin them to my jacket it just means if i've got a jack like i had earlier and I can see a trailing hook and a hook right just in the scissors. I can literally just put my hand over the back of the pike's head and just knock it out and let it go. Um, if I can't see those hooks, like the, uh, like the second jack on the, the pop-up sardine, I've got my longer forceps. Um, and if on the odd occasion that you get that barbed hook in, in, in a position and you just can't get enough force on these, then you really have to have these big, powerful, long nose, you know, pliers and forceps in there, get hold of the hook, bang. But what I would say is if, if you've got a hook anywhere around the gill plate and it is difficult and you can just cut that hook away is 
get yourself where you need them on Farnham, but make sure you've got these is some wire cutters. Again, if you land a pike and that trailing hook goes in the land in it, just cut it off with some good old heavy duty wire cutters. Or if you're having difficulty with a pike and a trailing hook looks like it's gonna, you know, almost go in the gill rakers or even in your finger, just, just take it out, get rid of it. Um, and obviously I've got my pair of scissors here, really sharp one when I wanna cut a frozen bait or I want to chuck some chum out, let's say, and, you know, get yourself a good pair of pike scissors. So they are all the tools that you're going to need. As I said, these two very, very, very rarely, if ever, hopefully, will you need to use these. But it's going to be that occasion you don't take them. These come with me on every pike, pike trip. Um, yes, I've used these really powerful long nose. I'm not too sure I've used the, the wire cutters because as I say, quite often I hand the pike out. It doesn't go in the landing net. Um, make sure you've got them. You won't, hopefully, you'll you're hardly ever have to use them. But if you don't take them, you haven't got them, there's going to be that circumstance that arises where you've got a pike and you need the proper tools and you're going to be, ah, I wish I'd bought them. Get them, take them with you at all time. Nice selection of tools and unhooking should really be a doddle when it comes to hand in pike, especially the bigger the, the bigger pike. Those small ones are a little bit of a nightmare, but if you can gain some confidence doing hand in those, then you know as I say, it's a good starter, move on to bigger fish, but make sure you got your tools. I always have these on me and believe me. Um, yeah, when you haven't, you think, oh, I've got a pike you know, in the water. Uh, where are they? Just put them on your sweater. And, you know, with all those tools, you're not going to go far wrong. Let's just run through rigs. Simple, low resistance running rigs is all you need to use when you first go fishing. And what you'll find here is I've got one of these mini ledger stems the weight is attached to this and you've got a big ring creating low resistance you can put the lead direct on the main line but it causes resistance these stems are absolutely brilliant because if you've got weed you've got a bit of um, chod or a bit of silt they just drop in and this ring is proud so it, it, there's no resistance there to a taking pike here i've just got one of the big extra large buffer beads that that comes down to. Again, you've got your 15 pound line there and everything is so low resistance. A pike is not gonna know that that is attached to your, your hooks. Coming down to the wild trace, they've gotta be 24 inches on some club waters like this. This is 40 pound wire. Um, again, I wouldn't go any less than this, 40 pound wire. 24, it's just a little bit more than that. And down to two semi-barbed size six hooks. Now size six hooks are really good because they're, they're just do you for most baits. We, um, these uh, made up traces from Pipe Pro come in size eights and they also come in size fours. You know, fours I use on bigger baits. Eights I rarely use, but they're great on tiny little baits if you're using it. So, here they come with these little rubber uh, bait flags. I don't use these this often, but for a beginner, they're absolutely brilliant. They serve two purposes, and I'll tell you what they are. So the way to mount your actual bait, and as I said, we do it, we do it and use them frozen is because uh, you can cast them out. So your first, top hook nearest your swivel, find your barb and then push it, I went in my finger, push it through the tail root so it comes out the other side and then put your, your bait flag on as you can see, your bait flag. What these bait flags do to the beginner is they tell you what your barbed hooks are. So basically when you're unhooking a pike, you know which one is going to do you and the pike damage. That's the barbed hook. The barbless hooks, you know, they go in, we just pull them out. Second hook, again, find your barb, place that on the barb, and then position that hook into the sardine there at the back. So there's your bait. 
as I quite often, I'll chop the heads off. I just cut the heads off to ooze all that nice goodness. But you've got the hooks there. What, when I was a youngster pike fishing, what I didn't realise is I always mounted my baits the other way round, so the head was on the other, you know, the top, uh, the top hook. And it didn't strike me until a few years later that when a pike picks your bait up, it actually picks it up sideways like that. So you can imagine a small jack, it's going to have that middle hook or that bottom hook in its mouth. Hence the reason when you get a bite, strike quickly. So that hook is going to find itself in the fishes, you know, in the scissors, hopefully. And um, what a pike does is it picks the bait up and then it turns it and it swallows it head first, okay? Head first, so hence the reason why you don't have it the other way around because the pike will have to bend that trace. So mounting your baits, frozen, just like that. As I say, it's quite often quite effective. Chop the heads off with a sharp pair of scissors. Um, and that is it. All you'll need to buy is some of these little, you know, buffer beads and these little ledger stems will just give you that extra or that little bit, little edge, especially if you've got a bit of silkweed out here like we have or on the estate lake I fish, it's really silky, that goes in the silt and there's no resistance there. So pretty simple. As I say, the, um, the traces come ready-made. I would just say buy ready-made, keep within your rules, check if you've got a length that they do come to length and these hooks do abide by Farnham Angling Society's rules of 24 inches and they are 40 pound wire. So it's as simple as that and you know once you use the trace or you buy a few traces or what have you just store them on a little uh, rig case like this as you can see I've got some bolster sticks again I'll go into buoyancy critically balanced popping baits up at a later date I've got some other specials in here some big big hooks as well so um, yep yeah, store them neatly in your little rig bin um, buy your hooks ready made up from some company that knows what they're doing and you know later in the videos I'll show you how to make your own traces up just for, not just the basic traces but popped up traces as well so uh, pretty simple just keep just keep all your rigs down to really low resistance okay um, yeah and that will get you started straight away Well, we're coming to the end of uh, this a very, very short session. I've only been here just over two hours. Um, I've had three small jacks, one, one came off, which is pretty par for the course for this place. But um, one thing I didn't actually say is when I'm actually fishing for pike and I'm not doing videos like I have done today, I sit very close to my rods. I've got bobbins on long drops. The bait runner's not on. I've taken them off and as that bobbin goes up, really do you get a smack straight up. In that case, it's normally something like a carp picking up your bait, which uh, hasn't been, uh, isn't unheard of. But normally the pike are just beep, beep, it come up. You might have saw one stopped earlier and I thought, is it, isn't it? I struck and that was the one that came off. The hook was just a little bit in the scissors. So um, if in doubt, strike early. Um, hopefully you've got the basics you need to know about going out, not being scared about pike fishing, the, you know, the equipment you need. It is relatively simple. I didn't even get here early this morning. Um, I got here about nine o'clock. Um, it's about half 11 now. As you see, I've had a number of runs, so an easy venue just to get some confidence and practice. If I'd got here two hours earlier, which is normally what I would do, when I go pike fishing, I could have had another, you know, five or six runs extra because, you know, I missed the I missed the bite time just because I'm here to do a video. So hopefully you've learned a lot. Obviously, you know, as I said, this is just the basics. The next one will be a little bit more advanced. I am actually going to do a couple where I'll go and fish maybe a river on a roving session and do an in session where the chance of bigger fish are and also go to an estate lake where you got the chance of a 20. So um, we're going to talk a lot of you know about a lot of topics, 
go a lot more in depth about drop-off indicator, uh, enhancing baits, let's say, showing you how to make rigs, uh, traces and rigs, etc. etc. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you've got you know lots and lots of info from it. I've enjoyed doing it. Um, yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe button, thumbs up. If you've got any comments, questions, just please let me know and I'll be sure to include them in the next video.